All righty. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is John Graham. I'm the Elementary Digital Learning Specialist at the Maine DOE and get to wear my substitute teacher hat today, filling in for Emma Banks, our Computer Science Specialist. And I am pleased to have people from Lego to talk about products that I'm sure some of you have or are excited to have in your schools um, upcoming. And I would ask if people want to introduce themselves, if you can just use the chat and you can say who you are, where you're, you know, what your role is, what school you're coming from, and your email, if you would like, you can include in there. And I'm going to pass it off to Morgan and let them run through their spiel. And if people have any questions, certainly feel free to add them in the chat and we should have some Q&A time at the end. And this session is going to be recorded. So if you have to step out or somebody, somebody at your work wants to, to watch this, these will be available on a website link that I will share momentarily. Thank you. Well, welcome. Well, we are so glad that you have joined us today to learn a little bit more about Spike Essential. And we are so excited to support the main schools and districts in their implementation. And we want to make sure that um, you guys know how to get started with the sets. And I know there's a lot more coming from the main DOE around um, how we can support the implementation piece. But our purpose today is really to make sure like you've got all of that foundational knowledge and you know how to find all of the resources. And um, thank you so much for choosing Lego Education. We're, we're very excited. Um, I have with me here today, we've got Susan McGrath and Michelle Dudick, who are two of our fabulous master trainers who are experts. They know Lego education inside and out. So they're going to walk you through. They are, um, they are both teachers. And um, I'm going to pass it over to them and they're going to take it from here. So thanks. Okay. Great. Thank you um, all for welcoming us. And we are really excited to be here um, working with you all um, to get started with. In this session, we're working with Spike Prime, uh, Spike Essential, I'm sorry. Um, and while I kind of introduce a little bit about myself, um, Susan is going to share her screen. She's kind of running the behind the scenes. So I'm Michelle. Um, I'm from New Hampshire, and um, I've been a Lego education trainer since 2017. I also teach high school. Um, I teach with the Virtual Learning Academy, which some of you may be familiar with. So. Um, you know, I'm, I'm neighbors with Maine, so it's nice to uh, do something fairly local. Um, and we're thrilled to be here with you today. So I'll yeah, let Susan introduce yourself. My name is Susan McGrath, and I am not local. I live in Lexington, Kentucky. Um, I taught math uh, in the high school for 24 years. Uh, the past six years, I've worked uh, with K through eight teachers and students um, in our school district. Uh, providing uh, technology integration help uh, and working with uh, STEM and bringing STEM to all classrooms. And I've been a LEGO uh, certified teacher trainer for about four years now and absolutely love the concept of playful learning and um, engagement, student-centeredness and uh, creativity. So we're so excited what's happening in Maine um, with your state initiative and uh, with bringing computer science and coding um, and Lego education can be kind of that uh, great tool to have in classrooms. So hopefully this is the start of a wonderful relationship um, where we will always be here for you. If you have questions, um, you've got Michelle right next door in New Hampshire. Um, and so we're going to start out. I know you've been putting it in the chat. We're wondering where you are joining us from, but we know where you are. So <laughs> hopefully you're all from Maine. <laughs> um, and so I'll let Michelle get started. Michelle, can you see that? Okay, the presentation. Yes. Yep, okay. everything is uh, presenting perfectly. Um, while we uh, go through this and start introducing you to the Spike Essentials, um, if you have questions, please use the chat area. Um, I think Emily will monitor that chat. She'll give us a shout out if there's something that we need to address on the spot, but we will certainly end the session 
um, with some time for question and answer. But um, please, as things pop up, or if you're familiar with um, the Spike is, um, Essential and you have some ideas and things that you want to add, please feel free to use the chat. It's helpful for us and it's also helpful for all of you. Yeah, and Christy said in the chat that her Legos are here. So maybe we could ask really quick if you want to put in the chat, like, has everybody seen a Spike Essential kit at their school yet or not? <laughs> um, yeah, that, it, it is a little helpful for us to kind of know where you're at. I see Sarah's holding up hers, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, so today we really are going to go through the basics. So preparing to teach with the Spike Essential um, and what that really means, what the Spike Essential kit includes. Yay. Oh, I see. Oh, I see some builds from Wendy. Oh, I love Yay. it. Um, all right. Our agenda is fairly brief today. We're only here for um, an hour. And the idea is that we're gonna talk about getting organized. Um, lots of elements and uh, Lego bricks here. So we'll talk about how to get organized and stay organized. We'll take a look at the Spike app. Um, we will walk through connecting and renaming the Spike Hub because that will be um, a really important element to getting started. Uh, we'll take a look at some of those getting started lessons um, and we'll talk about learning through play. What does that mean and how does that work with Spike Essential? Um, and then we'll also provide you with some additional resources from Lego Education. So you know, what is it that we um, offer in addition to us being here with you today and getting started? All right, so the exciting part, the unboxing. Um, clearly some of you have unboxed. I'm gonna just take a quick gander at the chat just so, um, all right, so some people have it and they just haven't opened it yet. I see that some people um, have started building already. Um, and I think those are pretty much all of the answers I got. So I think we have people a little bit um, all over the place, which is fantastic. But what you'll see when you, un, when you open your, your big cardboard boxes of kits um, will be these yellow um, with a white lid, very durable plastic um, boxes. And that white lid is a great building surface. It has um, a nice lip on it. So it can help uh, prevent some of those bricks from going flying. And um, inside of the box, you'll have these sorting trays um, and all of your bricks initially and elements will be in, um, in baggies and everything's pre-sorted for you. Um, and you'll have this, I can maybe show it. So you'll have this sticker sheet as well, um, which is essentially directions on uh, labeling the, the white sorting tray. And the great thing about the essential kit is that everything is color sorted. So it makes sorting super easy, both initially and then um, that continued organization and then cleanup makes it super easy. Um, and so you just put those stickers around the, uh, the lip and the edge, and that helps to keep everything organized. You also have, when you open your box up, um, this, this card in the top, and it's two-sided. Um, the front side says right there, you know, start here with legoeducation.com slash start. Um, but that back side, those are directions um, on how to sort. So what goes where, again, really handy. Um, I know some teachers who will, um, will either laminate this or who will make copies of this, hang it up in a, the area where you're going to be using the solutions. Um, there are all sorts of options here, but this is very, uh, very, very handy for sorting and keeping things organized. Anything that you see, along the bottom edge here. So you've got, you know, you've got your sorting tray up here and then you have all of these larger elements in your motors um, on the outside edge. And that means that those are housed in the bottom of the box. Um, so just a heads up, that's where some of those, those bigger elements go. Um, and you also notice that you have a measuring tool right here in the corner. Um, and that's really handy when you get, 
get into the builds um, and you need to figure out, you know, what length axle you need um, or what length brick you need. Um, so that's there in that corner as well. Some of the elements that are in your box you have, and you can see right there on the slide, you have, um, you have your, uh, your hub. And mine's actually connected to my computer right now. Um, and you have got two motors. So you have two motors with this, this kit. You have, um, you have this light box here. It's a, it's a grid. Um, it's a little hard to see without having it in front of you, but um, you can design this, this, the lights that show up on this grid. So that's a lot of fun. Um, and then you have this sensor here, which is a color sensor. So those are um, some of the elements that come in this box. And um, then you also, you can see this cardboard box off to the side. This is the replacement pack. When you're taking everything out and getting it organized, I can't recommend enough that you take those replacement packs and you put them somewhere else. Um, that is not something you want to give your students access to. Um, hide them in a closet, a central location, whatever works best for your school or your program, um, your classroom, but you will need those at some point and you don't want those replacement pieces to just get mixed into um, to the main kit itself. So keep those somewhere safe. Yeah, that those replacement parts are key. Uh, and if you're sharing a set of kits throughout your district or in your school, um, just keeping those like in a container, you could literally just dump them all into a container um, for spare parts. Um, one other thing I might mention, we'll, I'll start getting into classroom management on you real quick there, Michelle. Yeah. Um, I also pull out, there are these wonderful pieces that go with um, the lessons. The Spike Essential lessons are just amazing. Um, and we'll touch on those um, today. But I usually pull kind of the fun pieces out, um, have them do the build and then bring them in um, just so I keep track of the minifigures and, and kind of those fun pieces. They can be distracting during a build, um, but they are part of the builds um, definitely at the end. Um, so I usually keep these uh, little this little tray here that's kind of all the fun pieces uh, in a little baggie and I have those in a separate place. Um, but just almost like the reward at the end for really paying attention to their build. So I'll be quiet now. That's a great idea. Um, a few more classroom management strategies. Um, we like to have kind of a phrase as you're building, um, you know, bricks are going to get dropped and elements are going to get dropped. Um, so sometimes it can be helpful to have a catchphrase, like it, when a student drops a brick, for example, um, they can say loud enough so that the classroom can hear, um, but maybe not the people down the hallway, um, Lego down. And that is kind of a, a phrase to let everybody else in the room know that they should just freeze and just stop for a minute so that that student or students can find that element. So if you have those linoleum floors, sometimes just pieces will scatter really easily. Um, grab that element, pick it back up, and then they can announce Lego found and everybody resumes. Um, so just uh, a little trick there. Um, we will talk about what labeling to keep things um, kind of organized and, uh, and together. Um, but another, method for um, having your students feel really responsible for the kits and take care of all of those different elements and bricks and the kits themselves is whenever possible to assign um, a, a pair of students or a group of students to a particular set for um, a period of time. So if I'm doing a unit over the course of, you know, the month of January, for example, and I've got my students in their groups, um, I'm going to assign Susan and Emily, they're always going to have set number one. And that way they know exactly, you know, what's in their kit, but it also helps to make them feel responsible for making sure all of those bricks are put back and organized at the end of the period so that when they come back to do their build or their next project the next day, everything is, is there. Um, it can also be helpful to have a, central, um, a centrally located uh, 
like lost and found container. So if at the end of the, um, the day or the period you find, or somebody else who's in your classroom finds a, a brick on the ground, instead of just opening a, a, a kit and randomly throwing it in there, put it in that lost and found um, jar. That way, when Susan goes to do her build tomorrow and she's missing, um, you know, she's missing one of her, I don't know, one of her technic bricks anyways, um, she can go to that lost and found jar and, and maybe, you know, she dropped it accidentally and somebody scooped it up and put it in there. Um, and, and share with anybody who has access to your space, to your classroom, that this is what we do with Lego elements that are just found around. Um, so that's an, another classroom management tip. Um, Naming um, and labeling everything becomes really important when you have multiple kits and multiple um, sets of students accessing them. Your sticker page um, does have some blank labels. Um, it's uh, in section number two. They've got the um, a border, an orange border around them. And it even tells you what you want to label. So you do want to label the exterior of the box. Um, you will then want to label everything else within that box, the same exact thing. So um, you want to name, uh, label your hub and you'll want to name, uh, label each of the sensors. Um, and then we're gonna show you how to rename the hub so that when you connect um, to your devices, that hub name pops up and it'll be the exact same name as the kit and it makes things run smoothly and, um, and easily when you have a whole classroom full of students trying to connect at the same time. As far as uh, naming protocol goes, um, I strongly recommend that you get together with the, uh, Wendy's giving us a great view of um, how her uh, kits are organized. I love that. They're all stacked. It looks like they're all labeled. They are neat. Um, it's beautiful. I love our Thanks, music. Wendy. I love <laughs> seeing that. It always does. It makes my heart it happy. Really does. <laughs> um, but we're I reckon having, we're having more fun than, with these than we could ever have imagined. Already. Oh, I love it. That's fantastic. Wendy, is um, that like your, like your classroom set or you share with the with the school this or how's that like, work? This is my classroom. We're only starting to use them in here to start. Okay. So uh, I teach technology. Oh, okay. And gotcha. then after they've learned how to use them, then we'll start moving them into classrooms. Awesome. That's Great. our plan. Yay. Um, so work with the other, um, the, the other, excuse me, the other faculty, the other teachers in your area and your school and your district um, who will also have these kits to have some sort of a consistent naming structure um, is also something that I really do recommend. Um, when I label a, a set that's that's mine, I label them um, Dudek one, that's my last name. So Dudek one, Dudek two, that's how I've opted to do it. Um, there are many other ways, you know, you can, you know, name of your program, name of your school, um, whatever works. But again, you just want to make sure that you're consistent and that everything, <clears throat> excuse me, everything is labeled the same um, when you, when you do that. Okay. You're muted, Susan. I saw the dang I was. <laughs> I had such a good streak going with the non-mute. <laughs> um, I saw Jeff was is putting some great uh, things in the chat, um, and he is our EV3 Mindstorms. He, that's our people right there. Um, yeah, the, the color sorting's great. Um, takes just nothing, and the two motors are nice. They're small, um, so if, when you get into spike primes, you're going to see a little bigger motors there. But um, and then Jeff said moving on the floor. Like if you have a nice floor in your classroom is and just pushing the furniture out of the way is a good idea too. I actually had, was at a conference yesterday and teachers asked me if they could just get on the floor. I'm like, heck yeah. So thanks Jeff uh, for putting those out there. Um, yeah, and kids will figure out how to rename. So yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. You know, they do. <laughs> um, okay, excellent. Yeah, working on the floor is perfect. Okay. Um, Another place that you might want to, uh, another thing you might want to label is the lid card. So that direction card that I was talking about. Um, 
the bags are are numbered already, so that helps with the sorting. Um, Jeff was commenting on that. Absolutely, so much easier than sorting um, the EV3s. You're right, that did take forever. Uh, motor sensors hub. Um, I have tried to write on these labels with all sorts of different writing utensils, and I can't recommend enough a um, permanent marker. Uh, the label, some of the labels are pretty small, so fine point permanent marker, but just a permanent marker. Pretty much everything else comes off. Um, mm. so that's my suggestion for that as well. We've even used um, label makers uh, yeah. and then put like on top of that so that the kids don't pull them off, we put like adhesion for that too. So that that might work for you too, if you have, if you have a label maker. Oh, shoot, now it's my turn. <laughs> I'm gonna turn it over to Susan for a while. <laughs> okay, so um, we are going to kind of come out of the presentation here for a little bit, um, but I'm just gonna go through a few slides and then we'll, uh, we'll get busy here. Um, so we've got a couple of places where you can go for the Spike app. And this app is used for both Essential and Prime now. So you have a one-stop shop for both um, Essential and Prime. Uh, just recently had a big update. This is 2.0, but we now are um, in Spike 3.0, um, which is really exciting. Uh, so that's where you guys will be starting. And um, the um, Essentials are just right inside. Uh, and so I'm gonna go through a couple more slides here, I think. Um, so we're gonna go to um, education.lego.com or you can type in legoeducation.com or you can just Google it, um, it'll come up. And that is gonna be where all of the wonderful and free, that I can't emphasize enough, free working in technology and uh, when you can maybe attest this things cost money when you bring in things to your classrooms that are technology integration or STEM, but all of this on edu uh, the education website is free for you. And what's wonderful about the units and lessons is that they just keep getting better. They, we keep adding to them, um, just bringing in more that you can integrate into classrooms. So um, again, the, I love that part of it too. And the lessons are like amazing. The amount of information and the structure of them. Um, the, the, on the teacher end, it's a great support, especially if you've never used them before. So I highly suggest passing that website on um, and we'll get into that in um, just a minute. And then we'll talk about renaming your hub. So I'm gonna come out of here. I'm gonna stop share because I can't remember if I shared correctly. <laughs> um, and I am just gonna go to my screen. So you might see yourself. Oh, let me get out of here. I hate these screens. Okay. Michelle, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to go to education.lego.com. Um, if you haven't been here before, uh, it has a little shop. And then over here on the side at the top, there's teach. Um, again, this is like a wormhole of goodness like it's amazing you can get like just involved really quickly into it um, there's teacher resources here uh, and supports there's the unit and lesson plans which if we have some time we'll jump into so you can um, some of you probably already started using them but um, we can do a little overview for those of you that haven't and then um, the spike app so i'm going to click on spike app here and then I am on a Windows machine. So it will default to whatever machine you're on. So if you're on a Chromebook, um, you're here, uh, you can choose, uh, it's gonna choose for you, but you can see what's available there. Um, your IT department might be where to go to use the downloaded app, but we also have a web app, which requires no downloading at all. So um, just a few different features to it that we'll, we'll talk about here. Um, I, I'm not going to download mine because I got 2.0 and I don't want to mess up my 2.0 round. Sorry. Um, so I'm going to go to the uh, web app to get started. But this is the downloading um, center. Um, if this is information you need to give your IT department to get it downloaded to Chromebooks and your Microsoft, whatever devices you guys are using, um, that this is where you can go and send that information on if needed. Um, I'm going to go to the web app, which is relatively new, um, and it is spike 
dot lego education and mine's going to come up dot com spike dot lego education dot com is emily putting links in the chat i don't know <laughs> she usually does that for us yeah it doesn't look like it right now but okay well anyway it's spike dot lego education dot com uh, and I'm going to move my little Zoom window up here out of the way. So you are going to see the choice. And by the way, if you decide to go with the web app, um, this is exactly, or the downloaded app, but if you decide to share this link in your, um, you know, learning management system or uh, share out in an email, wherever you're going to send that out to your students, uh, they're going to see exactly what we see right now. So they're not going to see, there's not like a teacher view and a student view. It's not like another, like other technology softwares where you have like a teacher platform, and then you have a student one. This is absolutely exactly the same as what your students are gonna see. So I'm gonna click on Spike Essential and then we're in um, and we're ready to go. So um, right here is a great place to get started, is the get started. <laughs> and this will go through, I'll actually just click on it so you can see the five tutorial activities. These are all of the main components that Michelle mentioned, um, the motors, the light sensor, um, our color sensor, the um, gyro sensor that's in there, and then word blocks, as opposed to like your icon blocks um, and your picture blocks there. Um, that's a wonderful place to start with your students. I don't know if if Wendy can attest to that or um, she has some tips that uh, she can share with us, um, but a good starting point. The units are all in here. Um, and by units, I mean, these are gonna be like the coding programs and that platform that students are gonna go to. This is this part, you have actual lesson plans that are out on education.lego.com. This is actually what you would do and the students would do to start coding. So you'll see our lessons in here for, oh God, I love them. The Spike Essential, sorry, I just, these are relatively new. Um, you can see that some are based on icon blocks here. Um, it'll kind of give you an overview of like the main uh, components that they're gonna be using, uh, like STEAM, computer science, storytelling, uh, science, et cetera all of which are gonna have math and um, language <laughs> art extensions. So I'll just show you those real quick. Even like a little first Lego league. Um, one that we might recommend that's uh, kind of fun is um, getting, is it Crazy Carnival Games where the uh, carousel is? Nope, it's the one that we built. It's the amazing amusement, amusement park. park. Thanks. Yeah, that's a great start. <laughs> a good one. So in the units there, you'll see then the lessons. And they'll start with beginner and kind of move on. Um, you can see a little drop down for more here. Um, and then it will, uh, this is again, exactly how students will get into it. Um, looks identical in the downloaded app as well. So if you go with the downloaded versus the web app, it looks the same. Um, you can see here, it tells you this is a beginner, grades one through two. And in the unit, when we go back to the um, education website for Lego, it'll have this kind of as an overview right there for you. So you, you can see it a little bit easier. 30 to 45 minutes, sometimes that's longer, depending on if you're doing extensions, the builds, the class, the kids, it's, you know, sometimes those will go over um, that limit. Um, and then here is where you could go out to the lesson plan uh, to view it. And when you do that, it's actually going to ask you to, I'll show you, it asks you to type um, the sequence of numerical digits so that they know you're over 18, which, you know, your fourth graders are going to know how to do. Um, but we just quickly have them go to the start um, to get busy with, uh, with it there. Um, when I first get into the start, is all of these have a storyline and a challenge and a problem for your students to solve. Um, so we're going to look at building a carousel for Sophie to try. Um, we have the minifigures in Spike Essential have names and profiles, um, and we have little minifig posters that um, are on the website. So you have those, and you could even blow those up, hang them in your room. Um, really neat for students to get started. Um, then you'll see the build instructions. 
And I'm just gonna go through those real quick. Up here is kind of what they'll need. It'll have a little number up here. These are all, all able to zoom in and move. Uh, if you have students with accessibility um, issues that might not be able to see that so well, it'll tell you how many. Um, and this one, I don't know if we have an act. There's an act, so I'm gonna show you this real quick. Michelle talked about before on that card, the lid card um, that you have actual real life representations of the axles and this number here is telling you it's literally three basically studs long. Um, you could even use the pieces that you have in your kit with the holes in them to compare, um, but you do have the lid card there the whole time. So this would be the axle of length three, um, Lego three, not three centimeters, not three inches um, there as well. And then once I get to the coding platform, then I'm wanting to connect my hub. Um, and so I have my hub um, plugged in and the, in these lessons, it's, it's very easy for students to follow the directions um, as they're going. Um, if you're you know, nervous about that, you could have Chromebooks or your devices set up ahead of time. Uh, but once I connect to the hub, it's gonna talk to me about, hey, you might wanna turn it on. <laughs> so I'm gonna turn mine on. Hopefully this, will, let's see if I haven't turned it on in a while. If it needs an update, I'm not gonna be happy. But you'll see a little white blinking light. This even has a show me how. And then I'm gonna open the connection window. I've got it plugged in. And then it will say it wants to pair. See if I can get it to show up. I might get, oh, there I am. Susie's essential. Hey. So I did not have it plugged in to my device. This is through my Bluetooth, and I'm going to hit pair. And then I could have clicked here to collect, connect with the USB cable, but I didn't, I didn't go that way. And I wonder if it shut down on me. It probably did. Let's see if I can go one more time. Let's try with the. USB cable this time. There we go. Let's try that way. Okay, there you go. So that way I used my USB uh, cord, which is in there to connect um, to the hub that way. And then this is where um, renaming can happen if you are using them for the first time. Um, and now I can go back to my project and I can always click back on that hub. And now I'm going to show you some, I'm going to do that one more time, sorry. So I'm connected. That was yellow before and it said connect to the hub and it wouldn't let me do anything else. Here now it's green. It has a check mark in this corner. I'm going to click on that because this is where the renaming can happen. If for some reason someone were to name it something I don't want, but also I always want it to stick with that naming protocol. And here's why it's so important. You have a lot of students in your class with devices and hubs, and we don't wanna cross those streams. We want for the person that's programming with kit one to be working their robot with the hub one and their program is with one, everything is one. Um, what happens is if you don't have that naming protocol ahead of time on the hub, when they go to connect with Bluetooth, they're not gonna know which one is theirs. And to have 10 show up um, in your classroom can be a little dicey. And I've tried to, I've done it before in a training with teachers and it took us a half an hour to figure out who's was who's. It was just a mess. So really important with that naming protocol to make sure at the end, if you need to walk around, um, if you need the students to come up and make sure their hub is, is renamed, um, that it, it it's renamed what it was to start. Um, so they, you know, they wouldn't know to click on that, but they're gonna find out. It's like Jeff said, they'll figure it out, um, but they would have to click the hub here and then hit rename. And then it would look like this, then you could rename it CC1 and then I'm done. And you'll see up there, it says CC1. Um, this also has some information for you, like my battery life is listed here as well. Um, usually get about a 40% battery life um, when you first open the kits. Um, 
I usually recommend, and, and we have in our districts, uh, when we when we lend out our our devices, we also have like a USB plug-in station that we we send out as well, so that you can charge them overnight. Um, they'll keep a charge for a while, um, and when they're if they're not being used during a build, you can always have the students plug it into their device so that it's charging, you know, while they're sitting there. All right. So that is how you rename a hub. So I think, let me go back here real quick and we will talk about a couple more things and then we'll have some time here for questions. Okay, so we talked about legoeducation.com or Lego, uh, education.lego.com. Great place to find resources there. Um, You've got now in your resources, the downloads page that's in there. When you click spike app in that teach download or teach drop down, excuse me. And we've got the web app for you at spike.legoeducation.com. Um, any other information you would need, you can reach out to us. You can go to customer success, which I'll share with you in just a little bit. Um, a couple other things to note about the differences between those two, the downloads and the spike app. With the downloads, students can save their, um, their work. Um, in the web app, they can't save it. It's not a single sign-on or anything like that. So um, when they're in spike.legoeducation.com, they can save it to their, to their device, but it's not gonna open up with those programs ready to go. So if you're using the web app, have your students save their um, programs if you need them to, save their programs to the device to open up the next time. If they're in the downloads, then that app is on their device. And so it will bring it up the next time they're in the device itself. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Um, Spike app doesn't automatically save. You have to save it to the device. There's a little save icon right there at the top downloads app it will stay on there for them to open up next time you can always just make it a good idea to have them save it to their device um, to open up uh, but that's that's one of the big differences between the two so what we would love for you to do um, is check out a spike essential set from your site um, find one of those lessons in the unit and lessons, which I'll go to in just a second, and then build the build and build the code. Um, have a coding party at your school. Like it's so much fun to just get together and do it together, um, but take it home. Um, if you have kids at home or you're just by yourself, it's fun to build and you can walk, watch Lego Masters while you're doing it. Um, it's um, just to experience it and explore, but don't assume that everything is going to be perfect going in. So what we've learned as teachers in the classroom with Lego Education Solutions is nothing goes perfect. We're going to lose a piece. Some students going to steal a minifigure. A couple of Chromebooks aren't going to work at least, um, but it's going to be a great organized chaos where your students um, kind of like Wendy said, they're going to have that playful learning um, and you will see students that ha have never blossomed before blossom. Um, working together, collaborating, uh, communicating together in a way that's just amazing. And that's why Michelle and I do this um, as our side gigs because we absolutely love it um, and we're so excited for you. Um, you can reflect in two ways after you do your build, um, kind of as a playful learner, um, but also as a thoughtful teacher, like how um, could you facilitate this? Because that's what you're doing. You're not a teacher in that case, you're just a facilitator. Um, and um, what would make that successful for you? Um, I'm gonna go out one last time before we take questions. And I wanna show you these lessons because they are amazing. So I'm gonna get out of here. All right, so on that uh, education site, education.lego.com, under teach, you go to unit and lesson plans. 
And so this is all, this is the stuff that's the, the great stuff that you would only see as a teacher. Um, so we go to products um, in that drop down again, teach on that website, and then spike, or excuse me, and then unit and lesson plans, and then come over to products and you can click on the spike essential, and then it will bring up those. And then you can click into, you kind of get an overall view of the grade level recommendations, although you can have a little wiggle room with that. Um, what topics you're gonna see, I'll load some more here. Um, animals in their environment, happy traveler. Um, I'll click on amazing in the music part. And then once you click on one of those cards, um, you'll come down and see the lessons. Again, building from beginner, and then all the way down to, um, you might see some advanced and you might see some that might include like a spike uh, or a brick queue with a spike. So just be careful of that. Um, some of them we've mixed two kits together. Um, and then once I click on one, um, oh, this is like the great, great free stuff. Um, I'm not gonna print the internet, but you've got everything up here. Um, that it's based on the five E's um, of engagement, exploration, explanation, elaboration, and evaluation. Then you'll see some tips, some differentiation, and then those math and language art extensions. Um, here it'll give you kind of that overview again, how to prepare. And then it's basically it's like just a playbook um, for teachers asking questions, how to facilitate a quick discussion, um, I'm a huge fan of really have, not just jumping into the build, but really prefacing it with some good discussion um, that ties into content. And then having that time, I know it's like the timing is the hardest part, but having that time for reflection is really neat. And you could bring in other technology platforms for, for that if you wanted to um, have students, you know, do a flip grid of like what they built and then you can give them a rubric or you could have a Google slide with a kind of like an engineering, engineering design journal for what they did or the questions. There's also a ton over here of teacher support with key objectives, standards, the things you'll need, additional resources. Um, there's the mini figure bios right in here too, and the sample assessment rubric. Uh, there's an online student worksheet for them to view, um, which you can click on. And then um, once you go through those five E's, which have timings to them, uh, then you'll see a little evaluation and then the tips for coding, there's some of those icon blocks, um, some modeling tips. Some will be open builds and some will be the builds like with building instructions. Um, so if you don't see building instructions with some of those um, first, very first ones or very last ones, that usually means it's an open build where they can kind of explore on their own. Um, and then you can see the extensions at the end. So just packed full of um, great support for teachers. Um, and this is something you could go through while you're while you're doing your um, your learn through play build. So keep that lesson plan out or um, and then go through and kind of think of it on that thoughtful teacher end or and on that playful learner end. How how did that lesson help? What would you take out? How could you make that um, meaningful for your classroom? Um, so with that being said, um, we mentioned that site already. Hopefully you got that down. Um, I also mentioned before customer success. And this is relatively new and our very own Emily Hayes is working um, as our customer success manager and killing it. Um, you're, you can sign up to get um, newsletters and um, join the community too, community.legoeducation.com. Share what you're doing. Um, it's a I love customer success for that. Um, I love getting my emails um, to see what's new, what's coming up. Um, this is how we would you would find out everything kind of new that's happening, new lessons, um, new updates, uh, and so forth. So uh, definitely a place for you to go. So I highly recommend um, customer success uh, signing up for that. We got a nice QR code there if you want to hover your phone over that real quick. 
And then also um, you've got us as your supports uh, through the journey. If um, you need any help with anything on that end. And then as well, um, we've got, hold on, time for questions. But we also have, I'm gonna go back to that in just a minute. We also have um, an email if you need any additional support at all, um, you just go to success at lego.com. Success at lego.com. Okay, questions, any questions? I'm gonna stop sharing. And Emily did put that in the chat, yay. And one quick thing, when we're using the build instructions and we get to the point where they're programming, the box that has the instructions seems to be like right over their work space and it's not movable. Do you have any thoughts on if I'm doing that wrong or if that's just the way it is? I've seen that happen before. Uh, where you can actually, let me show you, are you, let, let me see if I've got your question right first, Wendy, because I want to make sure. I'm, uh, let's just look at that one. Okay, are you talking about this box right here? Yes, exactly that. So it kind okay. of covers over your workspace. Yeah. And that there, didn't make sense to us. Yeah, this double, Air, the double lines here is like the window shade. Oh, okay. Oh, so the, okay. yeah. Is that helping? And, and does right? it matter? Because we have three different, depending on the grade level, we have some people on iPads, we have some grades on yeah. Chrome, and we also have students on MacBooks. Got you. Okay. Would it matter? Yeah. Is that on every one of them? It should be on every one. It's part yeah. of that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it but should be totally on the yeah. downloaded app too. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. I fixed it. <sighs> yeah. So that'll just be a screen and then they can bring it up again. It can also, yeah, I think Jeff might, it'll read it to them um, and then they can move it up and down. It'll know exactly where they were. Um, and then I don't know if you saw the drag and drop for those of you that haven't seen the this before, it's, it'll show the students kind of how to drag and drop as they're doing it, which is nice and connecting. Um, and then all you'll see all the icons down here. Um, and they can move through them. For the lessons, it's only going to give them the ones they need. Um, mm -hmm. oh, my chat's in the way. If you want a student that's really progressing and you want to go on and differentiate and have them look at more, you can actually come to the very end. You'll see this little dot, dot, dot that's in my bottom right-hand corner here. And they can actually click on Spike Essential and see all of the coding. So that's the big difference there is like, it will only give them what they need for the lesson, um, but um, you can click here and then you can show them all of it. And then I saw John talking about zooming in and out. John, right over here, let me move this up. There's our little window screen right over here. Like I can make it widescreen, but I can also zoom in and out here which can be helpful for students that, that need to see a little better. Yeah, and, and old people like myself. <laughs> so um, so that's, that's what we've got there. And then if there's any pictures associated, they've got that here. Um, that's not doing anything because I don't, you can zoom in to, I don't have anything on my screen right now, but let me show you what, yeah. so I can make it bigger. I can zoom back, make it bigger. I can drag these um where i need to and this is kind of it's kind of an infinite whiteboard a little bit it's not infinite actually it's finite but it goes down under here so just be careful they're not losing i don't know where my coding went um i'm i'm literally just clicking on this space on the grid here and dragging it so this is our programming canvas um, for that will you be doing more of these in the future for you know like this is unboxing and basic stuff Will you be doing more in the future on more in talk with Emily? <laughs> I'm ready for it. <laughs> I think um, I think we're still working out what the spring looks like with the main DOE, but it is our hope that we're going to be doing a lot more in-depth training 
where we get a little bit more into the meat of like what this actually looks like in a classroom and how you use it. So more to come on that. And that's the question I would ask to John as well. I've been trying to contact somebody from the state to answer a couple questions about that. Um, like when you nominate somebody in your district to be that person, we aren't a, we're not getting any information on what that will look like. Like what is the commitment? Yep, yep. I, I think we're still kind of building the program. So I think the the commitments in a minute, it's gonna be kind of a back and forth thing where um, the computer science integrators program where it's going to be people working with, you know, a variety of different technology components. I think probably it will look, you know, different based on the different pieces of technology that you're using. And I think the the um like the professional development stuff that expectations for those integrators in their different schools i think will have all kinds of different solutions i know and emma's been really the one that's taking the lead on this yeah. but i've just been been kind of present in co some conversations or you know chatting with people and i know that you know there's a lot of different things that people are looking at you know whether it's making videos, doing trainings after school, running um, running kind of a class with teachers and students together. So I think there's going to be a lot of opportunities out there. And it's certainly, you know, something that that's flexible. The concern we were having was the deadline for nominating the person is like in just a couple of days. Yeah. And we are just, my school isn't able to get any information on what is the commitment. Is there any way you can lead me to somebody that might be able to yeah, answer? Yeah. On, on the, yeah, on the website, we do have, um, and I can share it in here, we do have kind of a frequently asked questions about what it will look like in terms of a commitment. So I can share those pieces. Yeah, we've we've seen that and read that, but it's, um, I guess it's just not really answering administrators questions as, you know, what is the commitment? It talks about travel and expense and substitute teacher pay, but how often is it? When is it? Those types of things. And okay. maybe I, things aren't decided yet. I can, I know that some of that information is on there. Okay. So That'd be wonderful. I'll Anything you can give me would help. Okay. I'm just going to throw out there as well. Emily put in the chat area, um, the customer success, the, um, has uh, usually has um, some monthly webinar offerings. Um, I know one of them that we do, we do one that's just like this, where it's kind of the unboxing, but we also do um, a little bit of a deeper dive into the lessons. And um, then we also have uh, a webinar that covers kind of those additional supports. So what other um, professional development opportunities and how do I build a Lego community? So we also offer that webinar as well. Um, and so if you sign up for that customer success newsletter, if you follow customer success, you can kind of find out when those are. Um, and we we love seeing um, seeing people come to those and interact with us through those as well. So shout Thank out for you. that. Well, it was great meeting you guys and we're so excited for you and your students. Absolutely. <clears throat> And so I'm sorry, John, where did you say I'd be able to see more of that information? Were you going to, oh, is that it? <laughs> Thank you so much. That's one of the FAQs that we've put out that has kind of the schedule. Fantastic. But there, there isn't something, at least not that I'm aware of, that's like on this date, we're going to be having this in-person event. I don't think we're down to that level of granul granularity yet, but we will get there. Well, this is good because I haven't seen this one. Okay. So I'll pass this on. I appreciate right. that. Yep. Sarah, did you have a question? Hi. Um, I'm very new to this. They, um, my district, uh, these just showed up. I had no idea they were coming. Um, along with some other robots, and I'm I'm thrilled. I'm excited to be able to do something new with the kids. But I'm wondering if other people can give me some ideas. I I started them last year. I started in November in this position of last year. Um, and after getting the internet safety and that kind of thing out of the way, um, I started them um, 
on learning coding from code.org. Um, so I'm wondering, because this utilizes the code blocks, I'm wondering if anyone has suggestions on, you know, should I have them do some, I work with third and fourth graders. Um, should I have them do some code.org so they're familiar with that? drag and drop coding and then move on to this or I, I'm trying to where do I put this in my curriculum that that kind of thing yes yeah, sir I would suggest um if you start with that getting started tutorials that can really help with them that's a great place to start so you don't really need a supplement um if you're doing like a you know a huge coding unit um you could interchange this wherever you want, but you don't need, they don't need coding to get started with it, if that, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it might be something fun to get, to get started with them. Um, you know, you have, I, I usually start with, and even with, uh, uh, you know, littles up through high school with a, a basic brick activity, like just a Lego challenge, like they don't even do any coding just to get used to the kits, finding where the pieces are, that sometimes is, is helpful. And you can get your classroom management down that way and assign kits like, um, you know, you have two students that are always gonna use kit one and so forth. It helps you a little bit, but other than that, they aren't gonna need any uh, any other coding. If, if you start with that getting started, you'll be like relatively surprised how quickly They'll they'll get into. It. I mean, I've even seen first graders be like wow. not need much help at all. But uh, I'll defer to the group too. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. We definitely use we use um, code.org a lot here, um, K through eight. But for this year, I decided to switch over to Scratch for most of the yeah. older grades. <gasps> and it made sense. It made perfect sense because it lines right up with these it's as well as the yeah. easy threes. And so we have Scratch Junior for the K through two, and then everyone else is Scratch. They love it. I know they love it. I just, um, it was absolute chaos with the third and fourth graders last year and in trying to have them actually learning instead of just playing. So mm. uh, I, I, I have removed it uh, this year to kind of, Force that all they wanted to do was play other people's games. So oh, I well, simple I, fix. Just they're not allowed to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they can go there, they can go there for a few minutes of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We go there for ideas and then we get back to creating. Yeah. I think um wow. if there are any quick final questions, we'll take those, but it is um 359 and we are going to roll into um, Spike Prime um, at four o'clock. So I think we probably have some other people joining us. Well, we actually have a completely separate Zoom session. So I oh, have to exactly. close this session and open up the new one. So if there are people that are joining us on that one, we'll, we'll see you on the other side, but thank, thank you very you. much. We appreciate it. Take care. Thank Bye. you.